SMT Nation, what is going on? It's your boy, the SMT. I've got a huge T-Mobile networking update for you all, for those of you that are T-Mobile customers on the network, or even if you're on like an MVNO of T-Mobile network, you know, you're you're accessing, you know, your data through theirs. Uh, you're going to want to know about this. This is actually really cool. So many changes are happening behind the scenes, and this video is going to kind of sort of sound kind of technical, Bear with me, hang around as I cover some of the details, and then I'll give you guys kind of like a summary, uh, kind of like in layman's, laywoman's terms or whatever. Anyways, it's in regards to 5G and LT for 2.5 gigahertz. So we're talking about the mid-band 5G going on for T-Mobile. So many markets are starting to see the 80 to 100 megahertz channel bandwidth on N41, which is great. Huge potential for a lot of capacity on those sites. Some markets obviously have less due to licensing restrictions and the fragmentation of the 2.5 gigahertz. Uh, there's also some spectrum that is on the band 41 LTE side. Many times people are seeing like 20 megahertz of it there. So uh, obviously changes are going to be happening in very specific markets. This could begin very soon. Uh, we could be seeing the N41 channel bandwidth start to get modified and changed. So you know, in places where we're seeing like 80 and 100 megahertz, you may be seeing that change. Uh, maybe the 80 goes to 90 megahertz. Or if you're in a place where there's uh, 30 megahertz, it might move to 50. Or in a place where there's 20, it might move to 30. They're going to be playing around with the channel bandwidth for a very specific purpose. The mission is to reduce and overcome the ongoing interference problems associated with N41. The channel spacing should or could kind of remedy or reduce the interference that they're having with that band. And this confirms what I've been saying for well over a year. And it confirms the troubles that I've been seeing at hospitals and airports. Carlos S. Tech has videos showing similar associated problems as well. Some SMT community members have reached out to me and shown me radar systems destroying N41 signals all over California. And, you know, with this huge reduction in capacity and range caused by the interference. So, you know, the 2.5 gigahertz spectrum is supposed to be, uh, it's supposed to propagate really well. It's a low end frequency midband spectrum. So it's supposed to travel really far and reach and get indoors pretty well for a midband. And we're starting to see small cell like performance with these associated issues. So essentially the summary here is, 2.5 gigahertz has issues in certain scenarios when it comes to interference. It's flawed in some cases. Engineers are going to just have to deal with it and, and deal with those interference issues, kind of work around some of these problems. The increased band spacing should help improve the sites that have the reduced range, the poor signal strength, and the speed problems due to the interference issues. And this will likely require... You know, taking some of the Sprint LT Band 41 spectrum away, unfortunately. So in places that have really, really nice build out of Sprint, you may start to see some of those reductions ongoing. This will also put more pressure on T-Mobile to also get more EBS, BRS licenses from the educational institutions, the churches that have a lot of those licensed leases. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, this is going to help T-Mobile, and this is going to help T-Mobile customers. Now that they're really addressing this issue, they've kind of seen and learned the problems associated with the 2.5 gigahertz on the TDD side. So with this band spacing, we're probably going to start seeing better download capacity, uh, better potential uplink as well, I think. And then once they start doing uh, to scale the 5G intercarry aggregation very soon, the N71, N41 combos, those should be really nice as well, downlink and uplink. So they're working through these problems. Nothing is perfect. Like I said, this just confirms the problems that engineering is going to have to be dealing with. Hey, it just comes with the territory. But, you know, I told, I tried to explain this to some people before, but some people are just ignorant. They they, they don't want to listen. They think they know better than everybody. And, and, you know, this is just, these are things that come with networking. There's flaws in everything. Nothing is perfect. But I'm excited to see the solution get worked out and getting those kinks worked out. So very nice. Hopefully this comes your way. And if you've got a market where N41 is not performing very well and very reliably, hopefully this should get better range, better downlink speed, and uplink speed. Looking forward to it. Sound off in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of this development. 
Happy to hear about it. Uh, you know, what say you? Go ahead and sound off in the comment section below. You all are the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Let's go ahead and hashtag T-Mobile 5G. If you watch this all the way through and you're a real one, hashtag T-Mobile 5G. Ultra capacity 5G should be getting very, getting better very soon. Excited about that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all in the next video. Peace. Thank you for taking this opportunity to watch the SMT YouTube channel. If you appreciated this video, give it a like and a share to all your favorite social media platforms. Thank you in advance for that. Also, check out some of the links in the description box. We have the SMT Patreon page. We also have the Twitter handle at Sneed Tech. And do check out the audio-only podcast available on all the major podcast platforms. And if you are new and have not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and activate the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. We'll catch you on the next video. Peace.